In the mid-1970s, the American trucking industry was changing faster than anyone expected. Freight demand was booming. The interstate highway system was stretching across the map, and every engine manufacturer wanted the trucks powering that expansion to wear their badge. For years, Detroit Diesel believed they had nothing to fear. Their two-stroke 71 series engines had become icons of the highway. The 8 V71, known everywhere as the 318 Jimmy, screamed up grades and across flatlands with a distinctive blower whine and exhaust bark that truckers swore sounded like raw horsepower itself. Detroit sold emotion as much as engineering, and for a long time, the approach worked. Their engines revved higher, pulled harder at the top end, and delivered the kind of seat-of-the-pants excitement that made drivers fiercely loyal to the brand. The problem was that excitement alone could not win the future. Two-stroke power came with a cost. To make competitive horsepower, Detroit had to spin fast and burn fuel at a rate that made fleet accountants nervous. The roots blower, required to make the scavenging cycle work, stole a chunk of power just to keep the engine breathing. There was nothing efficient about a 318 Jimmy trying to stay ahead of its competition at 2,100 RPM. A skilled driver could get the most out of one, but the engines demanded constant attention, careful gear selection, and luck push them too hard on a long haul, and failure might arrive in the form of scuffed pistons, dropped valves, or a spun bearing in the middle of nowhere. Detroit had built a legend, but not a sustainable one. While Detroit enjoyed the spotlight, Cummins had been quietly studying the industry's pain points. They saw where the market was headed, and they designed for the road ahead rather than the road behind. Instead of miracles at Redline, they focused on low RPM torque, real-world fuel savings, and an engine that could outlast a truck. When the Cummins NTC 400 Big Cam arrived in 1976, it did not announce itself with sound or smoke. It simply worked better. The 855 cubic inch four-stroke six-cylinder delivered a full 400 horsepower without needing to spin itself into exhaustion. It produced well over 1,000 pound-feet of torque, at highway cruising speeds, where Detroit still needed another downshift. And most importantly, every bit of that performance came with less fuel burned and far fewer headaches for the mechanics who kept trucks moving. The big cam fuel system was the quiet revolution behind the engine's power. By redesigning how the camshaft actuated the injectors, Cummins reduced parasitic drag under partial load and returned horsepower to the wheels instead of wasting it inside the block. Without the blower Detroit relied on, the Cummins engine no longer sacrificed efficiency just to breathe. Heat stayed under control. The pistons lived longer, and rebuild intervals stretched further than Detroit could promise. Fleet managers saw an engine that did not fight physics. Drivers found one that did not fight them. The real turning point came when a major Western fleet conducted a three-month comparison between new trucks powered by Detroit's best eight V71 engines and identical models powered by the new Cummins NTC 400. The Cummins trucks ran every mile without major repairs, while the Detroit units burned noticeably more fuel and suffered two major breakdowns before the test ended. Drivers overwhelmingly preferred the quieter four-stroke that did not demand shifting at every hill. The fleet cancelled upcoming Detroit orders and switched permanently to Cummins power, sending a message the entire trucking industry heard loud and clear. Mechanics in shops across the country quickly recognized their own reasons to celebrate the big cam. In-frame rebuilds were more predictable and less time-consuming. Cylinder liners, bearings, injectors, and heads were designed with durability and serviceability at the forefront. The big cam engines did not require constant tuning or perfect driving technique to protect their internals. They just kept running. Even truckers who had been raised on Detroit swore that the engine asked almost nothing from them except diesel and oil. It was not loud, it was not flashy, but it earned trust the old-fashioned way, mile after profitable mile. The shift in culture happened faster than anyone expected. 
For decades, identity on the road had been tied to the scream of a two-stroke battling the wind. Now, the pride came from climbing a long grade without drama, without a downshift, without wondering whether the engine would still be healthy at the end of the week. Trucking was changing, and the big Cam Cummins did not just keep up with the transformation, it forced it. Detroit Diesel suddenly found itself watching the industry it once ruled turn to a competitor that refused to play the old game of noise and nostalgia. By the end of the 1970s, the message was undeniable. The future of the diesel highway belonged to the engine that did not need attention, one that did not need revs to prove its strength, one that could outpull, outlive, and outsave the dominant king of the decades prior. And that engine was the Cummins NTC 400 Big Cam. Detroit Diesel knew they were in trouble. In boardrooms and test cells, engineers and executives faced a new reality they were not ready for. The era of the screaming two-stroke was losing ground, and reliability, fuel efficiency, and torque had become the new definition of power. The engine that silenced Detroit Diesel had not arrived with a roar. It had arrived with confidence, the kind that did not need to be loud to win. Detroit Diesel refused to accept defeat quietly. The company that once powered the Allied victory in World War II and fueled the diesel revolution in the 1950s was not going to surrender the highway without a fight. Engineers in Detroit doubled down on what they knew best extracting more power from the two-stroke formula that built their reputation. The result was the 8V92, a bigger displacement V8, designed to push output into the 350 to 400 horsepower range and claw back the ground they had lost. On paper, the new engine looked promising. It delivered strong performance and maintained the snappy throttle response Detroit drivers loved. But in the real world, Fleets saw the same story repeating. The engine needed high RPM, burned more fuel to make competitive power, and when worked hard on long grades, could push temperatures into the danger zone. Maintenance remained demanding, and failures could still be sudden and expensive. While Detroit was chasing its old identity, Cummins continued improving their new one. The NTC 400 evolved rapidly as fleets embraced it, Cummins refined fuel mapping, strengthened bottom-end components, and introduced better cooling packages to match the engine's growing reputation for longevity. Each update built momentum. The big cam did not just win on horsepower, it became the default answer for fleets that valued uptime above all else. Operators understood that trucks sitting in a shop made no money and drivers knew that reliability was worth more than engine sound. The calculus of trucking had changed forever. Another advantage Cummins brought was flexibility. The big cam family was not tied to a single truck manufacturer, allowing nearly every major brand, Peterbilt, Kenworth, Freightliner, and International, to offer it as standard or optional power. Where Detroit increasingly relied on corporate relationships and OEM bundling to push its engines into new trucks, Cummins used performance to earn the business directly from those paying the bills. If a fleet wanted the most profitable powertrain available, they ordered the big cam. Brand loyalty was not bought, it was proven on the road. The late 1970s brought new challenges that only accelerated Cummins' rise. Fuel prices surged, emissions regulations tightened, and fleets demanded engines that could meet both requirements without sacrificing durability. The NTC 400 answered the moment with a fuel strategy that balanced combustion cleanly and efficiently, while Detroit's two-strokes struggled to adapt. The very architecture that once made the 71 series engines extraordinary, every cylinder firing every revolution, now made meeting emissions rules an expensive uphill battle. Exhaust temperatures remained high, Hydrocarbons were difficult to control, and fuel consumption refused to shrink. Trucking's new era had left Detroit's engineering philosophy exposed. Drivers, too, started asking for something different. They no longer wanted to fight every gear change or keep their right. Foot perfectly modulated to protect the engine. The big cam let them relax into the power rather than wrestle with it. A trucker finishing a 12-hour shift 
did not miss the noise of an angry two-stroke. They appreciated the calm confidence of an engine designed to make work feel manageable. Engines do not just move freight, they shape the experience of the people behind the wheel. Cummins had built a machine that respected drivers' time, skill, and fatigue. By the early 1980s, the numbers told the story plainly. Cummins-powered trucks dominated long-haul fleets, and the NTC 400 became a benchmark every competing engine would be measured against. The old Detroit 318 was now a nostalgic memory, and the 8V92 was fighting to maintain relevance in niche roles. The battle, once defined by sound, speed, and horsepower, had evolved into a contest of efficiency, durability, and trust. Trucking had matured, and Cummins was now the brand that best understood what maturity required. Even as technology marched forward, the Big Cam era refused to fade quietly into history. Countless examples continued hauling freight long after newer engines arrived. Mechanics who cut their teeth on the platform praised its simplicity and lack of surprises. Fleet owners kept them on the road because replacing a known perfect machine did not make business sense. And drivers, veterans of a thousand road stories, still claimed that no engine better represented the heart of American trucking during its golden age. The Big Cam did not just win a market, it won a legacy. The most lasting impact of the NTC 400 was not that it dethroned Detroit Diesel. It reshaped how every manufacturer, including Detroit, designed engines moving forward. Fuel efficiency became a non-negotiable priority. Low-end torque became the gold standard. Rebuildability became a core selling point rather than an afterthought. The age of loud horsepower had ended, and the age of smart horsepower had begun. Every major success in highway diesel technology since owes a piece of its existence to the lessons Cummins proved in 1976. Today, you can still find NTC 400s in service, outlasting the trucks they were originally bolted into. Some pull grain trailers and livestock through the plains. Some haul logs down mountain grades. Others sit ready in vocational roles, waiting for the next call to earn another paycheck. The paint fades, the cabs rust, and the miles stack higher than anyone imagined when these engines were young. But when the key turns and the starter engages, the big cam almost always answers with the same confident rhythm it had decades ago. Detroit Diesel would recover eventually, evolving into new designs and surviving through acquisitions and reinvention. But the original defeat still echoes through diesel history. The engine that once screamed dominance across every highway learned the hard way that the loudest machine is not always the strongest. The Cummins NTC 400 proved that real power does not need to shout. It simply does the job better than anyone else and lets the results speak. And that is how a quiet revolution, a four-stroke inline six with the right engineering at the right moment, silenced a legend. The true mark of greatness is not in how long you rule, but in how clearly the world changes once you arrive. When the NTC 400 Big Cam hit the road, trucking changed permanently. The industry never looked back.